Hello, and welcome to MaxiTherm's High Efficiency Closed Loop Steam Systems presentation, a poster submission at the International District Energy Association's 2023 Campus Energy Show. Patrick Lack is the Vice President of Business Development for MaxiTherm, and you can reach out to him if you have any questions. It's a common misconception that steam systems are not as efficient as more modern technologies. Many people believe they need to abandon their steam systems to achieve fuel efficiency and cost savings. What if we told you that a steam system can surpass the efficiency of a hot water only system using fewer components with a lower initial cost and a lower total cost of ownership? Imagine if the central steam plant could operate at 95% overall efficiency using traditional equipment that existing staff understands. That dream can become a reality by returning cool condensate to the boiler plant below the steam boiler flue gas dew point. Let's take a look at how this can be done. Here's an overview of our patent pending high efficiency closed loop steam system. We'll go through it step by step and show you how traditional components connected in a new unique way can make our dream of 95% efficiency possible. This image shows a single boiler for simplicity, but the concept applies to multiple boiler installations as well. Remember, it all starts with low temperature condensate, and shortly we'll explain how we can produce that. But first, let's take a step back and look at what the United States Department of Energy recommends in order to maximize the efficiency of a steam system. The energy tips we're going to show come straight from the DOE's website. Process heating tip sheet number one says that preheating combustion air is an effective method of raising efficiency. Energy tip sheet number 24 suggests upgrading to energy efficient burners, and we certainly agree. Tip sheet number 26A states that a condensing economizer can be used to prevent energy from being wasted. Tip sheet number three talks about using a feed water economizer to also prevent energy waste up the stack. Tip sheets number 10 and 13 explain recovering heat from boiler blowdown as well as from the deaerator steam vent, again reclaiming heat that would normally be wasted to the outside atmosphere. Our system implements all of these ideas and we're going to take a closer look at just how it works. Here's the first part of our closed loop system. Remember, the key is returning cool condensate from the system to the boiler plant. Again, we'll get to exactly how we achieve that in just a couple more slides. We're going to use some typical fluid temperature values that we can absolutely achieve in the real world as we go through this example. It starts with that cool 130 degree condensate. The first thing we do is bring that water to a combustion air preheater, one of the DOE's recommendations. Room air enters the preheater at 70 degrees ambient room temperature and is heated to 120 degrees before it enters the burner, which is a high efficiency burner as recommended by DOE. The condensate temperature drops to 110 degrees coming out of the preheater. Next, we use a common plate and frame heat exchanger to extract even more heat from the condensate, cooling it down to 90 degrees. This energy can be used for snow melting, preheating domestic hot water, or any other application that could take advantage of this temperature range. Now, another DOE recommendation, the condensing economizer. Our 90 degree liquid is used to cool the boiler flue gas stream below its dew point, extracting latent heat from the gas and heating the liquid up to 157 degrees. We'll take a look at the calculations as soon as we finish following the process through. Here's the other portion of our system. As you can see, our condensate finally returns to the deaerator or boiler feed system, ready to be heated and recirculated. Our system also uses a feed water economizer, which is actually the first stage of our stack economizer, the second stage being the condensing economizer we just discussed. In order to take advantage of the benefits of this feed water economizer, our system uses an additional plate and frame heat exchanger and pump to cool the feed water from the deaerator to 180 degrees before sending it to the economizer in order to optimize recovery from the hot flue gas. The energy extracted is used for preheating both boiler makeup water and water for use in the domestic hot water system. The energy recovered from the flue gas heats our feed water back to 224 degrees, which is ideal for the boiler. 
Our blowdown heat recovery vessel and our vent condenser capture yet more heat that would be wasted to atmosphere and returns it to our system. Now let's take a look at the calculations. This is a typical combustion efficiency calculation spreadsheet. It shows the temperatures that were illustrated in the last slides and uses real world numbers. As you can see, the air preheater adds about 2.3% to the efficiency, but the big jump comes from the two stage feed water and condensing economizer, which adds a whopping 9.5% more efficiency to the system, bringing us to over 95%. Of course, the key here is having that cool condensate available to allow the condensing economizer to work. So how do we do that? Let's take a look. The key to the high efficiency closed loop system is cool condensate return. So how do we achieve this? By using a vertical flooded heat exchanger like the ones manufactured by Maxitherm. Let's take a quick look at how they work. First, as you'll notice, there is no steam control valve. That's right, we bring high pressure or low pressure steam directly to our heat exchanger. Real units have an on-off butterfly valve to allow the unit to be shut down for service and maintenance only, but in operation, that valve stays 100% open. Our temperature control is achieved by using a small, high turndown control valve on the condensate outlet. A half inch valve is large enough to control a 10 million BTU per hour process load. The way the system works is by varying the level of the condensate inside the shell. This first picture shows a diagram of a fully flooded shell. The process water enters at the bottom on the left and then exits as hot water on the right. All of the heat exchange tubes in this diagram are covered by condensate, so no heat exchange is occurring. As we open the condensate valve and lower the level of condensate inside the shell, more of the heat exchange tubes are exposed to the steam and more heat is transferred to the load. When we're at full rated load, the shell remains 20% flooded. This ensures that we are able to return subcooled condensate always below 200 degrees Fahrenheit. By doing this, we avoid having any flash loss in the system. And if we cool it far enough, we can achieve the high efficiency 95% in our central boiler plant. Now that we've talked about the concept of the vertical flooded heat exchanger, here is an example of an actual real-world Maxitherm installation. This is the control panel of a Maxitherm producing hydronic water for building heat at 2 Liberty Place, a high-rise building in Philadelphia. The steam comes from the local utilities district steam loop at 129 PSI, and as you can see, the condensate is cooled all the way down to 110 degrees, which is within a few degrees of the process return water temperature of 107. In this application, the condensate is put down the drain rather than being returned to the utility, so the heat exchanger is designed to extract as much energy as possible from the condensate so none is wasted down the drain. So here is a recap of our high efficiency closed loop steam system, now showing how Maxitherm vertical flooded heat exchangers can provide subcooled, low temperature condensate back to the main steam boiler plant. This is a typical system showing Maxitherms producing hydronic heating water as well as domestic hot water. Modern buildings that are designed to use and return low temperature water, for example, to maximize the efficiency of a condensing hydronic boiler, offer the perfect process temperature ranges that allow Maxitherm to produce the cool condensate necessary to achieve 95% overall efficiency in our steam boiler plant. So you don't have to imagine a high efficiency steam system. Now you know it's a reality. But did you know there are a lot more advantages to using maxing therms instead of traditional steam converters? Let's take a look. In order to illustrate all of the benefits of using maxi therm vertical flooded heat exchangers, let's take a look at a conventional steam system using a typical horizontal shell and tube heat exchanger to make hot water from steam. First of all, you need to reduce the pressure coming out of the high pressure steam plant to a lower pressure that is suitable for a conventional heat exchanger. This involves a PRV station, sometimes with more than one stage of pressure reduction, and usually with one third, two third valves. PRV stations are expensive to install, take up a lot of space, and require maintenance. Since maxi-therm heat exchangers can take steam directly at high pressure, 
PRV stations are not required. Also, PRV stations require a safety relief valve after every pressure reduction stage, and those safety valves require vents through the roof. Also, not required with the MaxiTherm system. And don't forget, low pressure steam requires larger piping than high pressure systems. Another thing not needed with MaxiTherm. Next up are the heat exchanger steam control valves, often one third, two thirds valves, which are expensive and require maintenance. Since we do not control a maxi therm on the steam side, these are not required. Conventional heat exchangers require a vacuum breaker to allow air into the vessel when the steam valve closes and the steam collapses. Not only is this not necessary for a maxi therm, with the exception of a rare complete shutdown, it is of vital importance because allowing air into the system brings in oxygen, which corrodes the piping, boiler, and other components. Maxi therm systems have been shown to produce condensate, which is up to six times less corrosive than conventional systems. Another unnecessary component is the condensate receiver. Since we have full steam pressure in the maxi therm vessel, even allowing for pressure drop through our condensate control valve, there is usually more than enough pressure remaining to simply push the condensate back to the plant without having to pump it. Other disadvantages of condensate receivers are their vents. Conventional, conventional systems need vents through the roof to allow flash steam to be dissipated. Because maxi therms produce subcooled condensate, there is no flash steam produced and no need for expensive space consuming vents. Finally, because we are not losing flash steam to atmosphere, maxi therm systems use less makeup water, requiring less energy to heat it and less chemical to treat it, all of which saves costs. So to recap all of the advantages of the maxi therm vertical flooded heat exchanger, let's review. Less makeup water. The boiler gets back more condensate, so you use less fresh water. This also means less softening, chemical treatment, bottom and surface blowdown. 0% flash loss. Condensate that is hot causes flash losses. Maxitherm subcools condensate below the saturation temperature, eliminating flash loss. No steam PRV station. Maxitherm systems can use high, medium, or low pressure steam directly. Steam at any pressure gives application flexibility. No steam safety relief or receiver vent to roof. Many times the vent piping is the most expensive part of the entire system. Maxitherm systems can eliminate the need for both the pressure relief and condensate receiver vent. No pumping substation. Conventional heaters utilize a pump to push the condensate back to a central return station. That pump requires electricity or steam power, again using more energy. The power source will also need a control system and isolation. Smaller steam inlet and condensate piping. Higher steam pressure allows for smaller piping. Smaller control valves improve turndown. No vacuum breaker means no air injection. Maxi therm units run at a constant pressure and a vacuum breaker is not needed. Independent site testing demonstrated six times less corrosion in condensate piping systems. 5.4 to 20% energy savings and greenhouse gas reduction. Stability of set point temperature to plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit. Eliminating components lowers maintenance costs as well as initial costs. 50 to one system turndown using that small condensate control valve. Less blowdown means less makeup due to our closed loop design. And finally, we need less chemical for the boiler and the return lines. The ultra high efficiency closed loop concept keeps the best advantages and avoids major disadvantages. We heat water and steam at 95% plus efficiency. Centralized equipment means low maintenance costs. High reliability with long lifespan decreases total cost of ownership. Reduce space requirement and overall footprint. Eliminates multiple combustion and venting systems since there are only central steam boilers. Many fuel choices are available, including electricity. Dual fuel is easy. It's proven and familiar equipment. Virtually zero air infiltration means lower corrosion levels up to six times less than conventional systems. Much lower water treatment and chemical costs. Reduced need for a de-aerator. Consider a heated feed water tank instead. 
Low down rates below 1% mean very low makeup rates. Low condensate temperatures allow non-metallic PEX piping for return to the powerhouse. Steam is a great way to transport heat effectively. Steam is a versatile heat source for most applications. Stop abandoning steam systems because of the misconception of poor efficiency. With the correct design, using traditional components, you can realize a 95% efficient steam system that can surpass the performance of a hot water only system, using fewer components, lowering initial cost, and total cost of ownership. Thank you for your time and consideration. If you have any questions, please email Patrick at maxi-therm.net or visit us at the IDEA Campus Energy 2023 show. We're in booth 100.